What's up, YouTube? I'm Danielle, and this is Kitchen Optimist. I'm a novice cook, but expert eater, taking on recipes that scare the sugar out of me one teaspoon at a time. There have been two items in the French cookie family that have been looming in my mind, taunting me with their deliciousness and utter intimidation. These are Madeleines and Palmiers. Dear French people, please forgive my atrocious pronunciation. I did my usual thing of trolling the internet and looking for recipes, and when I saw what was involved in making a Palmier, there are literally two ingredients, and it seems pretty simple. So that would have been probably a good two and a half minute video. So while lovely for my family members who watch these out of obligation, I like to dream big that at some point somebody would be very disappointed when they came to my channel and found an only two and a half minute video. So for your viewing pleasure today, I will present a brief French cookie retrospective courtesy of momsdish.com. I'm not familiar with her recipes, but the Madeleines boasts five stars from almost 2000 reviews. Let's get started. First step, melting one and a quarter cups of butter. I'm going to hit the easy button and melt it in the microwave. We're preheating the oven to 375 while we combine four eggs, possibly a little bit of eggshell, one cup of granulated sugar, it also has two spots where it gives directions for the process. One of them says beat, the other says whisk. She doesn't say anything but a mixer, so I'm doing it by hand. I'm gonna go with a whisk. It does say continue whisking until you get a fluffy texture. I don't know if I can do that by hand, but it says whisk. The other says beat eggs together with sugar until you get a smooth and even texture. It is smooth and even. It is not light and fluffy. It calls for two tablespoons of vanilla and half a teaspoon of salt. We have come to a point with another differing of directions. In one place it says beat in the flour a little at a time, and in one place it says fold in the flour a little at a time. I'm gonna go with fold. She doesn't say anything about sifting, but it feels like maybe I should have. I'm just really concerned this is not gonna properly mix up. Okay, I'm calling an audible. I'm gonna at least sift it. I don't think sifting could hurt anything. It seems as smooth as I'm gonna get it. So I now either beat in or fold in the butter. Since I've gone with folding so far, I'm gonna stick with folding here. Maybe I should have done that a little at a time too. Can't unring that bell. This is not folding well. Yeah, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. There's cautions about not over mixing. Okay, fully combined, hopefully not over mixed. Tastes good. Cut a little corner and fill each one. Oh. She said they should be full almost to the top. There's nothing about spatulating them once they're in, to be clear. I just don't feel confident that these are <laughs> in a place where they're doing what they're supposed to. They're supposed to cook anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on the size of your Madeleine pan. I'm setting them for 10 and I will check them after that. Okay, so this is the first batch out. It took about a 12 minutes for me at this size. They are golden brown as directed. They even have the hump on the back, which apparently is a thing. I had no idea. Since I'm pretty sure I probably did everything wrong on this, I'm not sure what you would have to do to not get the hump. Now to the palmiers. I have floured my work surface. I am turning my oven up to 450 and I'm grabbing the puff pastry. The only two ingredients for this are puff pastry and sugar. She is very specific that it needs to be high quality sugar. She suggests demerara sugar, which I did not know was a thing, but I did go get some as directed. Three to four hours of defrosting. We are at just about four hours right now, and it's still a little cool, but I suppose that's good. We don't want the butter to melt. Three quarters of a cup of demerara sugar. That's a lot of sugar. 
And now I run a rolling pin over it. Now fold it to the middle, fold it again. Fold the dough into the center and repeat again until the center meets. I don't, center is center, no? Now I cut them into quarter inch cookies and put them on a pan. Every time I cut them, I'm losing sugar, like a lot of it. And now what do I do with all this? I don't know if I should sprinkle it on. All right, I can't do all of that. I can't do it. Okay, now they go in for six-ish minutes and then we flip them. This is seriously so much sugar. So we have a situation. I cannot, for the life of me, get most of these off. And I do not actually think that it is the sugar that I sprinkled on top. They're stuck like right beneath where it's all leaking out, like from the folds. I also tried to use my offset spatula, not thinking about the metal on metal situation. So let's just say this one is no longer consumable and I'll be throwing this pan out afterwards. I can't get any of these off. I guess some of them are gonna stay stuck on. I'm gonna add other ones to this pan. The rest of these will be thrown out. So I'm gonna put these back in for five minutes because that will surely be the thing that fixes this. far, of the 20 that survived the flip, I have been able to extract one. See these? They're not going anywhere. So for gravity defying cookies, a win. For consumable cookies, not so much. This is the one that has come off and it looks like this. Well guys, where do we stand? This is the state of my still remaining pans. And what I did not realize while I was aggressively kitchen forklifting them off of the pans is that I was also completely destroying our spatula. I guess lesson number one in the kitchen is don't get cocky. Lesson number two is Amazon Prime the things that you ruin before your husband gets home. I guess let's do a taste test. Here are what my palmiers look like. Some look like this. Some look like this. It is a cornucopia of cookies that do not look like what palmiers are supposed to look like. Let's contrast that with my Madeleine results. They are golden brown. They have a hump. They ruined no kitchen utensils. Let's try them both, okay? For as much sugar as melted all over those pans, a lot of the sugar in the cookie is still quite intact. She said this type of sugar is supposed to give it bite. I suppose that's what it is. It really just feels like I'm just biting into sugar. So that's cool, I guess. They taste fine, because how can you really go bad with puff pastry and sugar? But you could only feed these to like, like drunk college roommates at three o'clock in the morning. Stoned college roommates at three o'clock in the morning. They look like they were rummaged through by raccoons. Let's try these guys. Can't be worse. I feel like they're a little dry, maybe a little dense. I don't know. I will make these again because I bought pans for them. And I have to feel like I did not waste that money, but they're, they're fine. The Starbucks ones that they sell wrapped in plastic are better. I think next time I make them, I will use a different recipe. Not because I think there's anything wrong with the ingredients, but I am not a good enough baker to deduce from two similar, but specifically different instruction sets as to how to combine ingredients to properly do that. And out of almost 2,000 people, I am the only one who had that problem, and yet, no one else seemed to say that. They don't require a crazy num amount of ingredients. I already have the pans now. So it would be a fairly simple go-to. I was ready to be the girl that brought palmiers everywhere. Hostess gift? Palmiers. Surprise guests coming for dinner? Palmiers. Oh, did you like those cookies? <laughs> They're just some palmiers I whipped up. Alas, that will not be my future. I honestly, I don't even know how I messed these up so poorly. I was re-looking at the photos and I think she like book folded them before cutting them. So maybe if I had done that, I would have contained more of the sugar. I looked at her pictures. There were no mats on those pans. There's no parchment paper on those pans. I did what she did according to the pictures. The directions clearly did not offer me the guidance 
guidance that I needed. I feel like I now have a grudge match with Palmieres, so I will probably will try them again, but again with a different recipe. So for time, the Madeleines took one hour, 31 minutes, and 43 seconds. That includes prep time, a significant amount of folding time, and bake time. She claims they take 40 minutes total, so it took me more than twice as long. I wonder if that's because she was using a mechanical mixer of some sort? It was very unclear from those directions if that was required. The ingredients cost $30.23. I got about 30 of them. The equipment cost $79.33, bringing the total cost to $109.56. For the Palmiers, the ingredient cost was $16.08. The equipment was $90.96, putting the total cost at $107.04. Obviously, in both of these cases, these are worst case scenarios to make all of these items. I think it's important to include all those prices because everybody's kitchen is stocked differently. Just like mine is stocked differently right now than it was before I made these. The Palmiers took 34 minutes and 15 seconds, plus the four hours that I waited Waited for the puff pastry to defrost. What can I say? You win some, you lose some. Some days you're a Madeleine, some days you're a Palmier. I'm just trying out recipes that have intimidated me, taking you along for the ride, hopefully allowing you to learn from my mistakes and conquer just a little bit of kitchen fear. The recipes will be linked below so that you can either try them and make fun of me for failing what was very simple, so hilariously, or check out some of her other recipes. Well, that's a hell of a Tuesday night for you. Shout out to my husband for being at a work event so I could film this tonight. Love you, babe. I'll replace this spatula. In the pan. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm Danielle. This is Kitchen Optimist, fighting the good fight for mediocre cooks everywhere. Stay sweet.